In this tutorial, we'll take the Catchery design and bring it in Unreal Engine. I'll show you how to export it, set it up, and get it moving with basic animations like the idle, walk, and run. By the end, you will be able to control your own custom character inside Unreal Engine and start building the gameplay around it. All right, so here we are. So this is the character that I'm going to be using, this character right here. So we need the character in T-Pose and we need the other animations. So the animations like the walk, the run, and the jump. All right, so now let's jump into Unreal Engine. So let's say this is your project and you want to load your character here. So first, what we have to do, we have to import our character right here. So what we can do, so our, I already got a folder here called character. We can just double click on it and we can create a new folder. And let's call it Ender Character. So double click on it. And what we need to do, we have to drag our FBX files. So this is the t-pose character this one right here so by the way we're going to find these resources in the description the character and the animations and the textures so let's start with our character i'd like to simply drag it and drop it inside unreal engine so for the static mesh we have to switch it from the type mesh we have to switch to skeleton mesh and for textures and materials so let's just keep that checked if you want to import the textures so you can just click on import all right, so there we go. So we got our character here. So we have to fix, let me just double click on it right here. So we have to fix the texture. So let's go ahead and bring the textures folder. So we got it right here. I'm gonna simply drag it and drop it here. And after that, we can create a material. So we can just do right click and let's search here for material. And let's just click on this material right here and let's call it Panther Character. After that, we can double click on this material and we have to assign the text that we got here. So first we got the color, which is the base color. I'm just connect it straight to the base color. After that, we have the normal map. And just connect it to the normal. And for the roughness, we can simply drag the roughness like this and connect it to the roughness. So after that, we can save. And now we can simply drag our material and drop it on our character. So now we got it textured. All right, so we got our character and it's textured. So the next step is gonna be to bring the animations. So let's go back to our main folder, our Panther character folder, and we can simply drag. We can create a new folder here, right click animations. And inside it, I'm going to simply drag the animations. So we got the idle, the jump, the kick, running and walking. You can just select them all and drag them inside the folder. And here for the settings, so in the static mesh, it's going to be again, skeletal mesh. And we need to scroll down. Basically, we need to assign that skeleton this one right here so you can just click and search for character skeleton and let's click on import all right so there we go so we got our animations the jumping for example this is the jump all right so now let's start the process of rigging our character inside unreal engine so for that we're going to be using a package it's a built-in package in unreal engine so you can just click on add and add feature or custom pack and we need to use this package a third person package and can just click on add to project all right so there we go it's added i'm gonna just cancel this and here we're gonna be seeing this folder here the third person character and inside the blueprints we're gonna be seeing the character blueprint so now if you press play so we're still not seeing anything so now let's assign our character so we can assign that default character so inside the word settings we can just scroll down to find the game mode of right and for this game mode of right we have to bring this game mode the third person game mode can simply drag it and drop it here and inside this selected game mode we need to make sure that the default pawn class is set to bp third person character this one right here otherwise you can simply drag it and drop it on top of the default pawn class here all right so now if you press play we're going to be playing with our default character that we imported from unreal engine so what we have to do right now is to swap or to change the character with our main character that we got here. We have to get rid of the default and replace it with mine, with ours. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, I'm going to press escape to exit the game. And inside this blueprint third person character, I can just double click on it. Let me just expand this window. And here we can change the mesh by clicking on this mesh character mesh is zero so down below you're going to be seeing this skeleton mesh asset 
So instead of having this queen symbol, I'm going to just switch it or change it to our character. All right, so now if you press, if you click on this viewport, you're going to be seeing our character here. But its size is pretty much small. So what we have to do, we have to scale it up. So I'm going to just press R to scale it up. And we can take this one up like this. So he's a big guy, so it's fine if we exceed that capsule. All right, so let's play and let's take a look at our game. So there we go. So we got our character, but it has no animations. So the system is set up. We can walk with it. We can jump, but we have to assign the animations. All right, so let's create the animation blueprint. So we can do right click and let's go to animation blueprint right here. And uh, we need to select which skeleton we are talking about, which is the character skeleton, and we can just click create it. So here we can call it character underscore animation. All right, so let's double click on it here, and we're going to be seeing this out pose, output pose. In here, in the asset browser, we're going to be seeing all the animations. So for example, if we bring our running animation, this is just an example, and if we connect it to the result, we can click on compile right now. So after that, we have to assign this character animation blueprint inside our BP third person character blueprint. So from here, we can switch the anim class from the default one to this one that we just created. So character underscore animation. So now if we press play, we're going to be seeing that running animation here, which means that this blueprint is working, the animation blueprint. So we need to work on it even more. So instead of having one single animation, we need to create a blend node or a blend animation that's going to go from the idle to the wall to the jump based on which keys we are pressing. So let me just delete this running animation and let's go back to our content folder right here. Alright, so let's do right click and we can go to animation and down below here we have legacy and blend space 1D. So let's click on it and we have to assign our character skeleton and here we can call it character underscore movement. So let's double click on it. So inside this preview view, we need to drag all the animations. So first we have to start with the idle. So let me just print idle and drop it right here. So this is the idle animation. We can just press alt to spin around. This is the alt, alt the idle animation. So from idle, we need to transition to the walk. So let me just print the walk. Let's put it here. And after the walking, we need to be running. So let me just print the running animation and put it at the end. So now if you press, if you hold control, you're going to be swapping, switching from the idle. So this is the idle to the walk to the run. So this is what we want. So I'd like to change these, this max value. So for example, this one is set to 100, but inside our character right here. So if we select our character movement, so if you scroll down, you're going to be seeing that the max walk speed is set to 600 and the walk speed is set to 300. So we have to adjust based on these values. So let's go back to our capture movement. So on the left side, we have this option to expand this horizontal axis. And here I'd like to increase this number here. So let me just increase it to 600 to match the same settings that we got here. And after that, we have to expand these values or these nodes as well. And after that, we have to modify these handles. So I'm going to take the running animation and drag it all the way till the end. Or you can just click, for example, on this one here. So it's set to 41. So what we can do, we can select this handle right here. We can set this value manually. So I'd like to set it to 300. So we got the idle at the start. So we can just press control, the idle, the walk, and the run. All right, so now we need to use this character movement inside our character animation. So here I'd like to drag this character movement. Let me just drag it and drop it here. So I'm going to just connect it to the result. So you can just compile. So now we got the idle, which is the first element of this one blend. So now if you press play, you're going to be seeing the idle. So we got the idle animation. But if you press W so that we can move our character, so the other animations are not loaded. So the reason why it's not loaded, we have to set up the speed. So we need to trigger that second animation. So for example, if you are pressing, if you are moving, if our character is moving, we have to adjust based on the movement. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to just press escape. So inside our capture animation here, we need to add a new variable. 
So inside this variable here, we can just click on it and let's call it speed. And we have to set it to float. So float is a number. After that, we can simply drag that speed and put it here and we have to use it to control our movement and just connect it here. So based on the speed, we need to adjust this character movement. So if this speed is zero, so our character is going to be idling. If it's 100 or actually 300, we're going to be walking. And if it's 600, we're going to be running. So we have to set this speed variable inside the event graph. So we can just jump right here. So here we have this update animation event blueprint. So we can simply drag from here. Or actually what we can do, we can simply drag that speed here. So we have to set it, not get it. And we can simply connect this straight here. And after that, we need to get the speed of our character. So out of this get tripod, we can drag and let's search for get velocity. So get velocity is get the speed of our character. After that, we have to convert it to a vector length. So you can simply drag from here and let's search for vector length. And we need to assign it to our speed. And let's compile. All right, so now let's play our game. So if you press play, we're going to be able to switch from the idle to a running which means that our and our node is working. Let me just assign the material right here. So inside our character, this blueprint uh, character. So I'd like to select my mesh and we have to assign that character here. We can just search for character material. This one here, Defender. So now it's assigned. Let me just play. There we go. It's working. So if you'd like to adjust the camera, for example, if you want to make your character the camera close to your character. Let me show you how to modify it. So inside our third person character. So we have to select this camera boom. So inside this camera boom. So we got this target arm length. I would like to set it to just 300. Or actually 280. So let's play. There we go. So now we are pretty much close to our character. And it looks better from this angle. Alright, so now I'd like to show you how can we include the walk animation. So right now we have only the running. We are transitioning from the idle to the run. So we have to make it walk first. So to do that, let me just press exit right here. So let me just show you first the quickest way to do it. So we can select our, let me just scroll down here to refine the character movement. And we need to set the max walk speed to just 300. So now if you press, if you play, so we're going to be moving from the idle to just the walk. There's no running right now. So for example, if you are working and if you press shift, we need to be switching to the run. So first, what we have to do, we have to include that event, action event. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can just go to edit, project settings. And on the left side, we have to scroll down to refine input. So inside this input, I'd like to add action mapping and it's going to be running. So let me just add a new one. It's going to be running and we can expand it. And for the key, it's going to be the left shift. So left shift this one right here so you can assign any key that you like in my case i'm gonna stick to this left shift all right so let's use that i'm gonna just go back to my blueprint right here and inside the event graph so let me just scroll down here we need to bring this character movement i'm gonna simply drag it like this and we have to set the max speed we can simply drag a node from here and let's set max walk speed this one right here and we have to bring that key that we just created, the key, this key right here, the inside this one, the running action mapping. So you can just right click and let's search for running. This one, the action event. And if we press our shift, we have to be setting this max walk speed to 600. All right. And if it's released, if that key is released, we have to go back to 300. So what we can do, we can select this node, press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Let me just drag it down here. And when it's released, so let's just reduce it down to 300. And for this target, it's going to be the character movement always like this. All right, so let's compile and let's play. So now by default, we are working. So if we press Shift, we're going to be switching to the run. And basically that's it. So we, so we got our character movement. So we set up our character movement. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future projects. Take care.